Hi, this is DarkFox127 and welcome to another Scrum Creation Kit tutorial video. In today's video, I'm going to be starting off a brand new series called How's It Done, where I go through some of my past mods such as CTR, Merskrum Estate and Riverside Shack, and I cover how I do some of the really cool things that are within those mods. So today I'm going to be starting off with something fairly simple, and it's going to be how to create your very own lightable fireplace. So let's get started. Okay, so here I am in the creation kit and I've gone ahead and set up a really simple test cell with a fireplace and a chimney at the top there with some chimney smoke, which can be enabled as soon as you light the fireplace. So for this video, I'm going to be using scripts from Project Modularity. If you are unsure as to what that is, you can go ahead and check out the video at the top right of the screen now. It explains pretty much most of it. And then you can come back here if you wish. So the scripting is really simple. You're not going to need to know any scripting, coding, anything like that. You can pretty much just add the scripts in and fill the properties as we'll see shortly. So don't worry about that. Now, the first thing that we need to go ahead and do is of course, find some fireplace pieces. So I want to type in fireplace to the filter, click on all, and then just drag and drop in this one, the firewood burning. So I'm going to go ahead, place this to roughly where I want. That should do quite nicely. And then I'm going to grab the off version as well. Now, of course, you can use whatever you like. Uh, but for this video, I'm just going to use this. This works quite nicely for fireplaces. Place that roughly where it goes. You could copy the exact coordinates, but I haven't got time to do that. So, yeah, there we go. That's pretty close enough. Now, the first thing that you want to go ahead and do is just hide one of these. So double tap one on the keyboard when you've selected an item to hide it. You can press Alt and one which we'll see shortly to just show everything again i'm going to be using that trick quite a lot with this setup so i'm going to double click on one of these and i'm going to go ahead and give it a reference so i've called it df ref fireplace on now the reason that i'm going to give things a reference is because when you come to selecting references it makes it far easier to quickly catch if you are selecting the correct reference because sometimes you'll select the wrong one and such and it can be quite annoying to be going off these names they're not that easy to spot so this is going to be off by default so it's going to be initially disabled as the fireplace won't be lit when you first walk in so i'm going to alt and one double tap one and now i'm going to select the off version so paste that in call that off and have that enabled so okay on that now next thing that we need are two triggers so i'm going to click on the fireplace i'm going to click this button up here which looks like a cube with a t in it and i'm going to double click now and I'm going to go ahead and create some new triggers. So I'm going to do the on version first. I'm going to go ahead and copy that again. Hit OK. And under name, it's just going to be fire. And then activation text, instead of it saying activate fire, we want it to say sort of a unlight or put out, I suppose might work. So put out and fire. So instead of saying activate, it's going to be place activate with whatever you put in here. So say put out. Now that's good enough for now. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm just going to resize this trigger box. Now, if you don't have the gizmos by default, you can toggle them on and off by pressing two. I'm just going to bring this down and try and get this roughly how I want it. It doesn't have to be perfect for this video. That'll do quite nice. Now we need to make sure that this is activatable by the player. So I'm going to go ahead, double click on it. And I'm going to go along to the tab called Primitive. Tick the Player Activation. Then go into 3D Data. And because I've got everything snapped to grid, everything is perfect. And the problem here is there is a glitch with Skyrim trigger boxes where if this doesn't get offset just slightly, it tends to break and not work. So just make sure you put one on the end of a couple of these and get that slightly offset or you might end up with a nasty glitch. So I'm going to go OK on that. Now I'm just going to hold down Control and D while this is selected, duplicate it and double click on it, edit the base and create an off version. And I'm also going to go ahead and change the activation text to light. So it's light fire and create new form and OK. So I've got two trigger boxes here. Now what I want to do is go ahead and link these trigger boxes to the fireplaces. So I'm just going to hit two because these sort of gizmos are showing up and double click on whatever one of these I end up with. So I've got the off version. I'm going to go along to enable parent, select reference. And as long as one of these is visible, it'll be fine. Double click on it. And for fireplace off, it's linking to off. That one's fine. So I'm going to double tap one, hide that and select the one underneath. And this one, I'm going to do the same, select reference. 
and I'm going to change off to on. So the reason that we gave it references is because it's very easy to list these next to each other and we can go ahead and click on. So that's going to be linked to the on version of the fireplace. So you're not going to end up with both triggers visible all of the time or it's just not going to work. It's going to be confusing and weird. So next thing is to enable ref our chimney smoke. Now in this case, I am using FX smoke chimney 02. You can use 01 and you can go ahead and try and point it in roughly the direction that you think the wind is going. So it just keeps it all immersive. That's if you're in an exterior cell, of course, where your chimney most likely will be. I, however, am just doing this with uh, all interior, so don't worry about it. So enable parent, I am going to go ahead, select reference, and the chimney smoke is going to be copying DF ref fireplace on. So I'll select that and hit OK. Now the other thing left to do is go ahead and start scripting. So I'm just going to Alt and 1 to show everything again. And I'm just going to hide that one because it's getting annoying. I'm going to double click on one of these and I have DF trigger fireplace on. Edit the base. Now, what might have made this a little easier is if I had added the script beforehand, but just to keep things a, a little simpler and easier to understand, I'll just do them one at a time. So under script, I'm going to go ahead and click add. Now you can go ahead and download the scripts that you need with Project Modularity, or you can download them individually by visiting my website, going to the Project Modularity page, and you can ask to just download the scripts on their own. Uh, there should also be a link or file on the Nexus site as well for the, the scripts, because I understand that people aren't going to want to download 400 meg worth of stuff just for some scripts. So they're all going to be available. All the links will be in the description below. And I'm going to go ahead and search for PM. Now what I'm doing here is I'm simply going to use my PM script, dead simple. Now what I would recommend is in case people start using these scripts that I provide and they make changes to them in their mod and their mod could end up overwriting others, you're probably going to want to go ahead and create your own version of the script. So what I would do is add the one that I'm going to use. So it's candlelight. Don't worry about the name. This works with a number of different things. I'm going to add the script that I want. I'm going to edit the source. I'm going to select all of that and copy it. And what I would do is when I go to add, I would create a brand new script, give it a name, and then you just go ahead and paste the source into that script. And all you need to do is just change the name of the script to match the name of your script, and then just control and S, and you can recompile it. And that's all you've really got to do. And then just make sure you've got your own scripts, but you're using the PM scripts. That's what I would do. But if you don't want to worry about any of that, then just go ahead, you should be okay and just use the PM script candle and upload that with your mod and such. So once I've got my script added, I'm going to go ahead, click on that, and I've got a number of options here. This is really modular. It's really, really good. You don't need to worry about too much. Everything is explained with nice, simple tool tips. So first of all, I've got can activate. You can do this in multiple ways. You could connect this directly to the fireplace activator, so the off version, and you could have it so that when it's hit by fire, it lights it up. Or you can do what I'm going to do today and I'm going to have it attached to the triggers here and it's going to have a requirement of firewood to light. So you can really mix and match and do what you like with this and set it up however you wish. So in this case, uh, activation is set to true by default. So I can leave that as default. Can burn, I'm going to go ahead and have that unticked because I don't want burning as in you can hit it with flames. Then we've got candle lit. You want to go ahead and just select the lit version of the thing that you're lighting. So again, this has selected the wrong reference. I'm going to hit on and then I'm going to select again and I should get the off version that time. The fail is if you have failed to meet the requirement for activating this. So in this case, I'd need two firewood. So I'm going to type two firewood required. I'm going to copy that. I might not need that in a bit. Then FX blowout and FX light. Well, for blowout, you can use the default sound effect that I find is quite fine from Skyrim. So FX fire out. I'm going to show you shortly how to add in your own sound effect for lighting things up. I do provide one with Project Modularity. Is lit. Is this the lit version? No, it's the off version. So I'm going to select this and make sure it's unticked. I think it's true by default. No, it's false. Uh, we could leave that as either default then for this, or we could just do that. I'll do that just to be safe. Magic damage fire. Unless you're lighting it with magic, you don't need to select it, but that will also auto fill and you can change it to whatever you like. So that's the sort of type of spell that you need to hit it with for it to activate. Player F, you just tick auto fill. Requirement count. In this case, I'm going to want two firewood just to light this up. 
Requirement, I am going to need a form list. I'll show you that in a second. So we'll leave that for a moment and restrict, yes. You are restricted. You are going to require an item to light this up. So if you want the player to just be able to light this and unlight it whenever they please without needing firewood, you don't have that ticked. I think it's off by default. Yeah, it is. So okay on that. Now, before we go any further, I do need a form list for the requirements to light this up. So go under MISC and form list, alt click and new, or I've actually gone ahead and made one from early on. I've got DF, FL, fireplace, and anything you place in here, it's going to require the requirement count. So in this case, it's going to need two of every single item in here. So if you had two things in here, it would require two firewood and two of whatever else. Or if it's set to one, it's one. You get the idea. So I've gone ahead, dragged and dropped fireplace in here. So when you set this up, you can just go under items, misc, look for firewood. And you just drag and drop what you want in there and confirm it. And when you're in here, you can go ahead and select it under requirements. So this is DF FL fireplace. And now we'll sort out the sound effect. I'm just going to confirm all this first and go ahead and save. Make sure there's no boxes hidden behind the render window and object window and whatever else. So the next thing that I want to go ahead and do is set up a sound. So I'm going to go under audio and sound descriptor. I'm going to alt click and new unless I've gone ahead and made one already. Yep, I have. So what you can do is just find something that's similar to the type of sound you're going to use. So in this case, you can go with object and you can change everything up a little. You can keep the category and output model. This stuff really kind of determines the type of sound it is and everything and make sure that it plays correctly. Uh, if you do copy something, then make sure there's nothing in conditions. Otherwise, it's going to stop it from working. And all you do is go ahead, delete that, add the one you want, and it should automatically navigate to the FX folder in your Scrum data folder. If it doesn't, you can navigate it there. And so if I go to the one that I've gone ahead and created from earlier on, DFSD sound, you'll see that I've selected my PM match strike sound. You can add whatever you want in, just make sure that it's a WAV file and nothing under conditions. It is non for looping because we don't want it to keep looping. We want it a one fire sort of thing. You can change the decibels if you want to make it louder or quieter but we don't need to do that in this case it's sound to it's set sorry to audio category sfx and it's mono so that's all good so i'm going to leave that so when i want to go into here once that is created oh one sec missing a step you want to go into sound marker then and create a sound marker for it so you just alt click and new and you give it an id and you just select that sound descriptor that you created now i'm going to go back into my triggers here i'm going to edit the bass Sorry, one one. Uh, edit the base of this one and double click on here. And FX light, I'm going to select the sound that I've just created. So fire out. It should be a uh, light fire actually, but for some reason I totally named it wrong. Okay, so we want to go ahead and pretty much do the same for the other trigger box. So add. And I'm going to want my candle script and I want to go ahead and fill in these properties so can activate is fine burn is set to no lit is each of these so that has got to be set to on select this as the off version two firewood required notice that's spelt wrong there we go so I'll change that in a moment as well on the other one. FX out. FX fire out. And then our lighting sound is lit. In this case, yes, this is lit. So tick it. Player F, autofill, requirement count, yet again. Set that to two. Requirements, DF fireplace, restrict, yes. It saves, just get rid of any boxes showing up there. So I'm just going to try and edit that mistake that I made, and then we should be good to go. So if we just go to that fail message, that in there. There we go. That's better. So save that, and it should be near enough all linked together. Yep. 
that should be it. So now we're going to go in game and hopefully see that working. Okay, so here we are in game and as you can see the fireplace is currently off. So if I hit E, it says that two firewood is required. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick these up and light it. We get our lovely little sound effect for our match strike and it says that firewood has been removed from our inventory. You'll see it says put out fire now and before I do that I'm just going to TFC and go upward and you'll see that we actually have our smoke effect. So I'm going to put out the fire, we get the fire going out sound, TFC again, there's no smoke. And that is how you go ahead and set up a lightable fire. And that is it for another Scrum Creation Kit tutorial video, so I hope you found it useful. Please let me know in the comments section below. And also drop me recommendations for future videos for this series on anything that you'd like to see how it was done in my mods previous. You can also go ahead and check out the rest of my work over on my website at www.darkfox127.co.uk and please feel free to come along and join our community discord. There are links all over on my website. So thank you very much for watching and I will speak to you next time.